Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. From the most infected city in the world, yes, it's the Ramble with Alex Bennett. We'll be here till midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. We're talking to Stephen Pearl. Thank you very much. Here I am, a week, two weeks later, and I still haven't changed my T-shirt. <laughs> I haven't changed mine either. Fa- fa- let me put a, let me let, me let me change my co- let me chair. change my costume oh. here. Oh. Yeah. W-H-N-W. Wait now. Wait a minute. You were showing me a photograph, a, a, a drawing you did. You you do drawings, right? I draw a little bit once in a while. Okay, here's one for uh, you, Grateful Dead fans. Tell me who this is. Grateful Dead. Mickey, Mickey Hart. Mickey Hart. Thank you. And now <laughs> here's one. Here's <laughs> everyone's favorite train wreck. If I can get this, is Corey Feldman. I was right. There. And then. Uh, Here's one. The kids might like. This is for you religious folks. Dr. Phil is God, man. Dr. <laughs> Phil is God. Oh, yeah. wow. Some of the doodles I did, I thought you'd enjoy. Oh, boy. No, that's very good. That's very good. Um, um, Corey Feldman. Gee, <laughs> I, uh, I, the closest brush with fame that I had to Corey Feldman was Corey Feldman's father. No, oh, 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 he must one, one night, one guy. night in L.A., I, I, uh, Al Goldstein took us out to dinner at Spago's, <laughs> at Spago's, and one of the people at the table was Ron Jeremy, who I've known Ron. I know Ron, I've known Ron. So, Ron, so Ron. after it's over, he said to the, my date and I, uh, why don't you come with me and we'll, uh, we'll go, go, Corey Feldman's father is having a party. <laughs> now, I can't miss a Corey Feldman father party. Okay, oh, no. you know, it, it. So, so I went. I don't remember what he was like, but you know, I wanted to see who fucked up Corey Feldman. Uh, you know, and this is the it's guy. The village to fuck up Corey Feldman. Well, it, this was the village. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and village. and uh, yeah, then we wound up in Pasadena at two right. o'clock in the morning at the Rocky Horror Picture Show with a, nothing but porn stars dressed up as the characters. <laughs> yeah. They would all go to this theater to do the midnight show of Rocky uh, Horror. Yeah. Crazy. Boy, that came out that good. Hey, the only time Corey Feldman had a talented bone in his body was when Michael Jackson fucked him in the ass. You know uh, that? And I remember <laughs> four, 4 o'clock in the morning, we wound up in a parking lot with, uh, with, um, uh, with, uh, with Ron uh, opening up the trunk of his car and then showing us his press clippings. <laughs> Sounds like a hell of a night. It was really... Uh, you need more like them. Well, that wasn't the lowest night of my career. The lowest moment in my career was when I went to a birthday party for the owner of the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Okay. And um, uh, I, they take a picture of me. They say, can we take a picture of you? And the two guys on either side of me, one was Jerry Buttafuoco, <laughs> and the other one was John Wayne Bobbitt. Oh, the, the A-list, baby. Yeah, oh and I God. said, I never got a copy of the picture, but I said, this is the bottom of my career. Oh, God. This It'll is as like bad as it that. gets, okay? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hey, Wilbur Mills and Fanny Fox couldn't make it that night. <laughs> <laughs> they had a comedy act in Buffalo. Uh, yeah, comedy <laughs> act in Buffalo. Man, oh, man. I'm telling it's you. That's crazy. Well, who's the most obscure person you've ever met? Uh, oh my God! Let's see. I met Mike Miner once. Uh, Mike Miner. Now wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got remember Mike Miner. I know the name. I'm just trying to remember what Mike Miner ever did. Of, of I, notes. he sang really white songs on a on a hit TV series in oh. the final days of the series when it was really a piece of. Thing. What was the series? Petticoat Junction. Oh, oh he yeah. s- sang that theme song? He's the one who married one of the oh. girls with the red hair. Or, uh, oh, okay. All right. Big Ben Joe, Billy Joe, Bobby Joe. And he was a he, he flew crop dusting planes, you know, him and Uncle Joe. 
got a plane here. Stay, we're gonna find a time past the plane here with Uncle Joe. I'm the only veteran actor on this piece of shit. I want to raise her. <laughs> and uh, then they came, they'd sing like three little words, eight little letters means all these fucking white songs that there's no soul to them at all. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. My mind's dead now. Don't look for it. Boy, that that's uh, this is a lot of trivia. You know, when you want trivia, you come to this guy. Come to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rondo Hatton. Anyway. Yeah. What now? What's happening there in in Vegas? All the all the. Uh, uh, happening anywhere. Are... When we're recording this, all the casinos are yeah. closed. But I read that what what club what one said they were going to open up. Uh, I think Paris or something said they were going to. Who was going to say they were going to MGM or something said they were going to open up? I don't know what's going on now, but you got to be like forty eight feet away from somebody. You so got to. Like but I mean, to begin with, you do you want to know how filthy that situation is? Forget the distancing thing. You can take uh, care of that. You can say you can't use this slot machine, but you can use this exactly, one. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, that you can do. I just saw a cat's tail in back of you. Uh, they always want to get in on the action. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're uh, uh, but the thing that they're not taking into consideration is pulling the handles that somebody else has just yeah. pulled, or pushing yeah. the button. If you're too oh, lazy yeah, to pull yeah, the handle, yeah. you got to push yeah, the button. And pull, unless man. you're wearing gloves, that's that's that that could in and of itself cause a problem. Yeah. Oh God, I don't know what I don't know what they're gonna do. I, everybody is going nuts. Everybody wants to get out of the house. Everybody wants to get back to work. The comedians are going crazy. And uh, but if there's something out there, I'm waiting for some egghead in a lab coat and several degrees and subjects I can't comprehend. Going, it's okay to play again. Then until then, I don't need a guy with like a cotton candy coat. Where we're, we need business. Oh, it's going to be huge. It's it, going to be it's, huge. It's no, gonna, I, it's, I want some kind of scientist to tell me, okay, there's no more germs. It's going to be a while. It's really going to be a while. Well, they you know, uh, no matter what anybody thinks, months. all these openings and everything, every place, Georgia, they opened up and yeah, they let yeah. everybody go anywhere they wanted to go, yeah. and they they had a rise about 100%. It's just insane. You know. It's insane. This is just something. Oh. It's the end of days, folks. are going to be destroyed by Well, we are again. living in a, in, a, in a, holo not a holocaust, a catastrophe yeah. horror film. Yeah. Okay. So this is like the last forward. man on earth, you know. And all, yeah, the, the, the world, the flesh, and the devil. With the, the only thing that'll be the left world. after the coronavirus plague are are zombies. Okay, yeah. you know. <laughs> It'll be Harry Belafonte, Inger Stevens, and a racist white actor. No one remembers his name. That's what <laughs> the world, the flesh, and the devil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they were quite. You know, there were film. I'm surprised people aren't doing it. There were films like The World of Flesh and the Devil, in which yeah. they took place finally in, the, in New York City. And what they did, they did it at like five o'clock in the morning when there was no hardly anybody in Times Square. And then they blocked yeah. off Times Square and they let them shoot it. And when maybe things got a little busy, they shot up so you didn't yeah. see all the people on the ground. Exactly. exactly yeah. Uh, you could do that right now on Wednesday at three in the <laughs> afternoon. I mean, that's how empty it is. Yeah, that's you know. Insane. That's and you insane. know something? It hasn't been the worst. Uh, uh, it ha 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 you know, it, it happens to not be the worst thing that's happened to us because I look out, and this town has no smog. They yeah, oh yeah, no, everything's clean. L.A. It, is clear. In the it is just, right it's here. like somebody, like, cleaned my eyes off, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they say that in India, uh, it's the first time that people in Bombay have been able to see the mountains in their entire yeah. lifetime. I can see the dot on my head. By yeah. Time. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's cleaning the planet up. So maybe this yeah. is God's way of saying uh, cleaning the planet up. Maybe it's time for the humans to take a powder. You know, yeah, even to the animals. Exactly. I have no problem with that. I, exactly. I've, I've seen enough. <laughs> I've seen plenty of stuff. So, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so it could be the end of days. It just could be some weird shit because I don't remember. Yeah. Ever. You know, I wasn't around for like the smallpox in the 30s or anything like that. But yeah. this is a major quarantine the world over. It's insane, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you doing? Like, I don't want to go out and go, oh boy, you know, why am I sick now? So I just, I don't know what to do. So I want to work with, uh, you know, I go out for food and I went out for my haircut. I just could only take so much. I hear the dispensaries are opening up again. Yay. So, uh, oh, oh, wait a minute, the marijuana dispensaries closed? I look, oh, yeah. Everything. That's not considered an essential service? It is to me. So. <laughs> wait, but this is, in, this is in Nevada, right? 
What? This is in Nevada. Yeah. And, 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 they, and, they, and well, wait a minute, wait a minute. There are people who are told by their doctors, use yeah. marijuana for this or that. Uh -huh. So how is that not an essential service? I think they made deliveries like between certain hours and you had to pay like a, an extra delivery fee or something like that. But uh, I get mine from some bootleg in the parking lot. It's a little funny. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have my little hip flask put it in there. Yeah. But, uh, it's uh, it, it, I, what I heard this friends uh, you couldn't go in them. I, but I looked at today and then uh, in the electronic phone book for different dispensaries in Nevada, and every one of them said, "Open, open, open." So hey, maybe you just put a mask on and yeah, I would think I would think they would be considered essential. I mean, much in the way that I think, uh, like for instance, here liquor stores are still open. Okay, you know that would be essential for some people. Who and and there's a lineup travel. outside the liquor store. That's near oh, us. We, every now and then, open, every every now and then, Marjorie goes down and looks down and gives me the count. Three people waiting in line. Six All people right. waiting in line. <laughs> Give me my cutty song. I would. Uh, I guess booze is essential. You know, I don't drink, but I guess booze is essential. For some people, they gotta have it. There's, there must be a lot of alcoholics. Wait, in this you were you were never a drinker, were you? I hate alcohol. Oh no, you wanna see Pearl Hurl, man? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't I like, like I, I I you know what I don't like? I don't like the high. It's a high. I just don't. It, I hate I, the taste. I hate the buzz. I hate having to pee every three seconds. I hate the hangover. It's it, it, it's yeah. like cocaine. It feels good for about ten minutes, and then fuck it. it just but you know what's happening? I can't do pot anymore because I get paranoid. I get really paranoid. Really? Well, certain uh, pot. I have this. I have this. Uh, uh, what do you call it? This uh, vape thing. Uh huh. And I vape. use that, and that doesn't make me paranoid. But there's some other stuff that Marjorie gets from illicit sources in California, and uh, I get really paranoid. I'm worried about jumping out of the eighth story window really? and things like that. Yeah. I mean, and that never used to happen to me. But then I, I haven't used, I don't do pot a lot. I haven't in a long time. Pot has a THC content of 27% and a Jewish guilt content of 98%. <laughs> now, the, the, but the, but want to jump. <laughs> the, the vape I can do. The vape doesn't get me that, uh, uh, doesn't give me, gives me a different kind of high. You know? Uh, like an you know, old time pipey guy. So <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, vaping. It's convenient, you know. Yeah. I, I don't have to light a joint and burn my finger, <laughs> you know. I just I just go, and the little light lights up, saying, "Hey, you're good to go." And uh, and then I exhale, and uh, it's uh, all this, these well, these vape fumes, you know. I've always I've enjoyed it. And, uh, it. It's been my friend, and it's never let me down. Everything else, every other substance has let me down. I never liked alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I was young once. I go, we go, come on, let's go to Hewlett in there and then pull up a few down there and feel like shit in the morning. But yeah. uh, I just, I hate, I hate, I have no, alcohol has no uh, existence in my world. So Now you, you have a video on YouTube, don't you? Uh, what? You a have video? a video on YouTube? Of, I must. Of I'm you sure. doing Tony Bennett's hand or something? Oh, I got a lot of those. Hey, good to be here. Tony Bennett's hand singing and swinging for you because Tony loves to sing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, put your mask on, be careful, and remember your A OK -okay in Tony's book. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thanks, Tony. Good to see you. It's Tony Bennett's hand. Tony Bennett's hand. <laughs> Tony, but keep the illusion going, you asshole. Hey, Tony Bennett's hand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, look, I'm going to go on YouTube. Look under Tony Bennett's hand. There's around 30 of them there. And it's growing like a fungus. Boy, am I bored. Uh, are, are you really? Do you, and you even learned how to put them up on, on YouTube. Yeah, I learned how to put them up. Even on my, see that my little bitty phone here. I can do it from this little thing here. It, I learned. Because this is so idiot proof. Even me, even an idiot like me can, you know, because. Well, supposedly oh, Zoom is idiot proof, but we had trouble getting you on today because it asked for a password and no, it shouldn't ask for a password. Yeah, maybe we put on two. Uh, uh, maybe, I'll, uh, maybe I'll check. What, what I'll do is I'll check my. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, my, my preferences. I bet in my preferences okay. I can say no password, motherfucker. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so. HZ3 Arrowhead parallelogram. Yeah. So anyway, you're 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 surviving the quarantine. You're staying I'm in. Still here. I'm you're still, still here. Yeah. The cats keep me from going nuts, and uh, you know the internet, and the weed, and the, you know, yeah. all that stuff. So uh, hey, if, a, right. if things get really hip, I'm going to get myself a designer mask or something. You know. <laughs> I want with the Rolling Stones logo on it. But, uh, yeah, uh, cool. but uh, yeah. Hey, listen, um, we got about we got about fifty seconds left. 
and then we're through. Oh, we're done, man. Oh my God. Our time is out. Yeah. Uh, uh, still no, you know what? Time. You know what? With Zoom, you got to do. You got to do all this within forty minutes. Otherwise, yeah. you're. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's crazy. You're toast. Unless I want to pay for this, and who wants to pay for anything? Anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you're in Las Vegas, there's absolutely nowhere you can see this man. Nowhere. Nowhere. Uh, and my mailbox. Are you getting? Are you jonesing to get back on stage? A big time. Yeah, sure. Everybody is. You yeah. know, I'm going nuts. I'm going nuts. Ah! I never got tired of it, man. It's my only, you know, my, my vice. Hey, this guy's crazy, ladies and gentlemen. His I'm name tired. is Stephen yeah. Pearl. Okay, Stephen. Yeah, Hey. Thank you very much, everybody. Good to see you. Hi, Alex. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, yes, that's our good friend Stephen Pearl, and um, uh, good, good for him. Oh, you know what? I know. I noticed. It. Do you see the picture is so bright? Now watch what happens if I just click this. And uh, there we go. See, it it all of a sudden I see. Here's a, here's what an asshole I am. When I reboot my computer, all the a lot of the different things change, and I don't uh, do anything about them. See, I should have done all that before we went on. Okay, all right, all right. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's. Oh, you know what we what we should do? Uh, do our little uh, our little theme as it were uh that's not what i wanted <laughs> our, our little um the theme that goes like this oh 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 that hurts Ooh. isn't that foreboding ladies and gentlemen yes yes scary scary Oh, look at all these places there. I mean, there's Las Vegas. That's where we were just talking to. Uh, that's, I don't know where that is. I might be Atlanta. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, that's somewhere in Europe. But look, it's empty. They're all dead. They're all gone. Listen, I went to a lot of work putting this together, so I'm going to use it. Okay, till you get goddamn sick of it. Ooh, ooh, let's all drive along. Oops. Look at all that graffiti. Here we go. We're cleaning things up. She's running. She's getting... Oh, COVID-19 testing right there. And she's driving. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Mm, yeah. Pow. Yes, and there's the map, ladies and gentlemen. We have the... We, let's go to the big map. The I feel like uh, the weatherman, right? I'm doing kind of my weather thing here. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, it's kind of like weather. Ale Here's Alex with the weather. Okay, well, the weather isn't very good. If, look, total confirmed uh, cases worldwide, 4,995,712. Let's see. Tomorrow it might be 5 million worldwide who have had confirmed cases. Say up there the word confirmed as opposed to bar mitzvah. Ah, I've been doing that joke over and over again. Why do that again? 328,095 global deaths. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. I mean, it's not like it. You know, we can look on the bright side. It's not like the great uh, Spanish flu of 1917 slash 18. Actually, it was more like 1918. Uh where the total death total may have been at least 50 million, okay? All right, but we didn't have a lot of the medicine we have today and so on. And, of course, we didn't have Donald Trump protecting us. So, you know, th 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 that's the reason it's different. Uh, let's go to the United States, okay? we got to see what's happening here because uh, it's not that good here. We, have, we are now up to total, oh, wait a minute. I'm going to hit U.S. there. Come on. All right. Uh, 1,551,853. Uh, we, we've hit over 1.5 million cases totally confirmed in the United States. 
Uh, the deaths here in the United States, there they are, folks. 93,431. And today in New York City, it went up. It was at, I think it was at 105, uh, two deaths, rather, yesterday. And now it went up to 105. I was hoping it would go down because I want to see it go below 100. That's my, what I want to see, okay? That's what everybody would like to see. But the total uh, deaths here in the United States, 93,431. They say by the end of the week, we may hit the 100,000. The, the, uh, 100, uh, uh, maybe. Uh, today's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, I'd say probably by, at least by next Monday, we'll see uh, uh, 100,000 deaths. Uh, and, of course, it's all Obama's fault, right? Okay, I just wanted to let you know that for sure. Now, here's something that's happening, though. Look look at the list here. See, this, these are the list in orders of people with the most cases right now. Uh, the United States, way out front. We're, we're out front, We you know. Uh, but coming fast behind us, Russia has suddenly seen a spike to 308,705 cases. Now, maybe they just weren't reporting them, or maybe it just took a while for it to get there. But so far, they've got 2,972 deaths. Okay. Uh, unlike uh, uh, the United States, where we can complain and blame our deaths on Donald Trump, in Russia, you can't blame them on Vladimir Putin because you'll get killed. Anyway, um, uh, so you see Russia is now in the number two spot. It was way down here somewhere, you know. Uh, and then we leapfrogging ahead of a lot of countries, Brazil all of a sudden, um, they've got, uh, hold on a second, come on. Give me, give me that. Come on, I'm clicking on you. Damn you. There we go. 291,579 right there. They have 18,859 deaths so far. And that, Brazil is going crazy. I mean, they got, they, they've got people on gurneys in the hallways so the hospitals there. It's so bad right now. They just suddenly went up. All right. United Kingdom. Is now in uh, uh, is now in uh, fourth place, uh, two hundred forty nine thousand six hundred and nineteen totally confirmed, uh, but the deaths are thirty five thousand seven hundred and eighty six. Okay, now we get to these other countries: Spain, which had all used to have a lot. It's kind of kind of it's kind of going down a little bit. Uh, you can see here, yeah. Right there. Uh, United Kingdom, how are they doing? Are they going down? No, they're still going up. Still going up. Italy, is, it looks like they're, they're plateauing over there. They've got 32,330 deaths. And France, 28,135. Uh, it's kind of not plateauing exactly, but it, it yeah, I'd call that a plateau. Germany, uh, you know, none of these countries are going down, okay? Um, Iran, oh boy, look at Iran, 126,949. They got 7,183 deaths. And we go on and on and on. India, 3,000 deaths. Uh, Peru, uh, you see, as we go, it uh, gets less and less. But we're up here, we're just, uh, we're, we're king of the hill, folks. We've uh, we've pretty much uh, we've pretty much done it, you know. So congratulations to us. Oh, I didn't want that picture. Well, I could get ready. That's our picture we use for. See, I'm 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 having all. I'm trying to do this thing so it's a, a kind of a full service TV show, and I'm doing all the stuff myself, and I just do it badly. But anyway. Uh, that's we'll be going to that in just a moment because right now I am going to open up the Skype lines. And by the way, my eyes are just burning today. You know, one day we have uh, no problems with the with the uh, allergies, and then the next day it's like a living hell. And today my eyes have been burning like crazy. But 
Uh, hopefully we'll be, we'll be coming out of this soon, you know. Let me see. Come on. Skype, open up, damn you. Okay, there we go. Uh, and Skype is now, uh, let's see here. It's now open, my Skype, but it's whirling around. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now people can call me. All right, if you want to call, and we can uh, we can do this. What we you'll see you'll see how this whole thing works, folks. It uh, and it works pretty well too. Well, let me see here. Um, uh, we got uh, um, let's see here. Here's Jeff. He's the first caller today. What Char happened? Charlie's calling. Hold on. Don't worry. Don't worry, Jeff. I got you. And here comes Bill Meyer. Okay. Now let me start putting these people in. In their place, okay. Uh, first, uh, I guess we'll put Bill Meyer on top. He hasn't been there for a while. Oh, hold, hold on a second. Mm. Rob Alfano, I got to answer that. Well, who's down on the bottom there? Uh, okay, that's Charlie. Okay, now wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me uh, let me put um, a, a scuba diver in there. Uh, well, uh, no, wait a minute. Cancel. Let me leave him there. Let's put scuba diver in there. We, these are I have to I have to do this all once it's done it's done you know there we go that's the that's the ticket okay that's the ticket okay now we go uh, let me see here who else do we have we have um, up, 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 we got Charlie oh, oh uh, Rob uh, oh Jeff okay Jeff mm -hmm. we got to put him in put him in number five. Uh, there he goes. Okay, and that's our uh, that's our, our people so far today. There we go, and a few more people should call soon. So you know, we'll add them as they uh, as they come in. Hello, everybody. Good evening to you. Oh, my eyes are burning. Oh boy. Anybody else having allergy problems right now? No. It's, but if you if you do in public, they'll shoot you. What? If you have an allergy problem in public, they'll shoot you. Oh, Last thing yeah, I don't you sneeze around anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like a pariah. I, I'm not, I don't sneeze that much. Once or twice a day, I have this really just sneezy sneeze. And I, I know it's allergies because, you know, there's an allergy sneeze you get. You know what I'm talking about? Where it's just, it's got up. Do you have allergy problems, uh, Charlie? Just in the fall. Just in the fall. Why in the fall? This is the time of the year to get them. The ragweed, when the ragweed goes oh, when the, rampant. Oh, when the ragweed goes rampant. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we're just uh, we're, we're we're having to uh, deal with this right now. And so and, and also, I meant wonder how many people are going up to the emergency room and saying, I think I had the coronavirus, and it's just hey, you got allergies. You know, you, know, you really want to get tested because if you do. Uh, then uh, you know they'll they'll trace you. There it might affect your insurance in the future if you test positive. No, it won't. Why? What do you say? Why are you saying that? Yeah, yeah. it's better to just die. The way they're gonna uh, keep track of people that have had it. Phil, where where are you hearing this crap? I'm not hearing. I'm just thinking well, about well, it. Is, is that your own sense of of things, Phil? Really? Yeah. Really. Yeah, oh. you know, I'm just asking the question. You know, do you really, I'm so you know, not expose your private information like that? I mean, you know, there's HIPAA and there's all this other stuff. No, look, look, uh, look. look. You know, there's every you, reason to go get you, tested you, if, you know, if, if. Look, you remember? Are you gonna uh, let me you know, finish what I was saying? Can I finish huh? what I was saying? I, you, you just interrupted me. Well, if I didn't interrupt you, you'd never stop talking. Never stop. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm not uh, Vernon and Ra and uh, and uh, Charlie. <laughs> oh yeah, Charlie interrupts all the time. He is just a pain in the ass. Yeah. 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 I am, my name is Coitus Repetitus. <laughs> you got Coitus. Uh, yeah, you got your <laughs> Now I forgot what I was saying. So go ahead, Phil. Tell us what pearl of wisdom you have. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, you were talking about the fact that. The only reason, if if you don't do not get a um, uh, do not get tested, okay, if you don't have any of the symptoms, 
because people who do have the symptoms need to be tested. Those are the ones they want to test right now. Later on, they'll get to everybody just to make sure. But at this point, if you have the symptoms or any of the symptoms, then get tested. You know, better to know than not to know. Yeah, well, uh, I think if you have the symptoms, uh, it makes mm -hmm. sense to get tested because, you know, you might be able to get something that will make uh, it less painful to go through this. No. No? Wait a minute. Uh, Gabnet Live started using a what? A device? Did you do some? Did somebody do something there? Let me see no. here. It was uh, uh, says uh, that uh, the upper corner there, but it said it yeah. across the picture. I'm, I, I, uh, br br uh, Brian. Uh, wait a minute. Hello? Oh, there we go. There's Brian. Brian? What? We haven't yeah. got a picture on you, though. You know how it was in the 70s? I mean, uh, if somebody had AIDS, they didn't, uh, they weren't allowed, or they didn't have to tell you. They, there was all sorts of stuff that... Yeah, but this is different, Phil. To begin with, that was a, a sexually transmitted disease, and, and it had a different onus to it than this does, okay? What, 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 is, what is that? It's kind of getting blurry when you get too close to it. I guess you can't see it. It needs a photo focus. This, this is one of our tests right here. Yeah, yeah, with the barcode and everything. No, Phil. I mean, come on. You know, people were, well, people were, were. It, it was a. Uh, you couldn't get AIDS by somebody breathing on you. Yeah, yeah. Um, kinda. No, Phil. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't. You know. Uh, it, 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 I understand that. All I'm saying is it's the tracing and, you know, your name being out there as uh, someone that has this uh, in, in virus. But who cares? It's not a... Well, you don't it, care now. Not, but am I suddenly going to... If I hear that Phil Meyer came down with the uh, corona and I had been in contact with him and they traced me and said, we want to let you know he has it. Maybe you should. we would like to do a test on you to see if you've yeah. got it. Uh, to begin with, I'd be happy to because I want to cooperate with this whole methodology. But secondly, uh, I wouldn't think terribly of you. I would feel sorry. I would call you up to see if you're okay. And you know, the lawsuits what it come. sounds like you're worried about is whether or not it causes bigger problems down the line. Yeah. And it, so if that's the case, then that doesn't bode well for wanting to open the economy before it's time. Exactly. Infect more people. Ooh, we just lost Brian. Well, if you're worried what about happened? that, and you believe that that's a real issue, no. then you should have more of an issue no. with people getting infected. I think if you're infected, you're not going to want to lay there in bed. You're going to call your doctor, and it's going to become it's going to be uh, it's going to be out yeah. there. Uh, but, Char Charlie, uh, these guys hand The problem is, you could be out there infecting people all around you without any symptoms at all for days. So you can't wait till you have symptoms to get tested. You got to be tested beforehand to find out before you infect a hundred people. Charlie, they're not going to test you unless you have symptoms, right? That's because they're not enough tests. Are they unless you're Trump? Are they going to test you if you don't have symptoms? Right. That's because there's not enough tests. We should have a Manhattan Project style thing going where we're producing it, it, hundreds it, of it, millions it, of tests. So we can test everybody yeah. in the country. Uh, but I'm uh, not uh, going uh, back uh, on the softball field until we have that. Yeah, but the the point is that also, uh, Charlie, the argument that I have back against that is, let's say you test everybody who goes out on your baseball field, okay, and right. and so you're safe, and now they all go home, and they come into contact with somebody yeah. who has it, and now they come back onto your baseball field again. That's why you have to have multiple tests for everybody That's, so you can get tested regularly. I would say, well, you know, in certain that's situations. That's what they have in the White House. Let me yeah. ask you this. They get tested how every much, day. How much does the average test cost? Not yours, Brian, but, you know, just the average test. Uh, uh, you know, that's with the personnel to administrate it and all of these things. Uh, what, what, what is the average cost of a test? I would guess they're selling their tests for 30 to $40 each. And then you have to have uh, uh, someone administrate the test and, and so forth. Does that include the lab work, or is that just the canister? That's everything, I would think. Okay. So our, our stuff is more expensive, but, no. but our, stuff is, also, want you to. our <laughs> stuff is clear wave. So clear wave means that even at the nursing homes, a nursing home provider could, take, could give the test because everything is done inside this cartridge, all the changes, all the mixing, get done everything. I understand. Outside. 
So if you if you take forty dollars a test times three hundred and thirty million people, uh, and you do it uh, multiple times, uh, I, I don't have a calculator on me. Phil, less it's cheaper more, than having to close the economy down again. Less than five percent of our defense budget. Less yeah. than five percent. Mm -hmm. But that's worth it. Got to be able to blow up people over and over and over. <laughs> yeah. After they're yeah. blown up, right. we have to be able to blow them up again. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, Cannot you can't have it both ways, Phil. You can't, you can't open up the society and not be testing. The reason we were gonna not, uh, uh, weren't going to open society for two weeks was to flatten the curve so that we didn't overwhelm the health care system. Well, we didn't overwhelm the health care system. Well, let's overwhelm it now. Yeah, let's well, overwhelm it now. The reason we, the reason it wasn't overwhelmed, at least here uh, here in New York, is because we took those precautions and because everybody in New York, because you know New Yorkers are tough, and they decided we're going right. to roll up our sleeves and we're, we're going to do what the governor says, and we managed, if he, we hadn't done anything, if we hadn't done anything, we would have overwhelmed the system. This, this, and we would have had hundreds of thousands of more people dead than are dead right now. I, well, we we all did something. We all yeah. sheltered in place for a period of time, not to overwhelm the system. The system didn't get overwhelmed. Uh, it's you know I I, I don't know. Okay, what so now we're going to go out and overwhelm it before we know the facts of of how uh, how. Now, it's been two, it's been a couple of months. It, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Huh. But it's still out there. It's not like this. Yeah. This it's, the, it's always going to be out there. You no, know, it's not like this thing has it's gone to. Oh, oh, Brian, this thing hasn't gone to sleep, has it? I mean, it doesn't have a sense memory that says, "Oh well, they're all after me now. I better leave town." Right. Did Trump any said of, it's coming down to zero? Trump did said. any of the other viruses go to sleep and go to zero? Uh, you know, the, sure. The you board. haven't heard of the Sp twenty thousand people a day. Right. Well, the Spanish flu didn't come back. Yeah, well, it killed. They came lot. back a couple of times, but then it went away completely. Yeah, you know. So and Trump keeps saying nineteen seventeen. Yeah, he. That was the movie. They, right. Yeah, it's nineteen eighteen actually. Uh, into nineteen nineteen. Yeah, but if he would have closed the borders in nineteen seventeen, you wouldn't have had it. He could have. What was it? Colorado spread it. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Spanish flu did it originate in Colorado? Uh, I, I, in Colorado, no. It originate in Spain. No, it originated in the states. I thought it, it, it originated in the United States. It started right. here. So yeah. if he would have, you know, closed the border off to that state, uh, it would have been fine. There's John Larkin. He's just joined us. Hello, John. How are you? Hi. Good. How's it going? Good. Well, you know, we every day I wake up, and uh, within a half hour after I wake up, because I wake up late, uh, our governor gives his little uh, his little speech to us, and uh, you know, he keeps saying that, you know, we have we have managed to take that curve and drop a drop it down. We're back where we were t almost towards the beginning. Uh, and uh, I think he's just done a swell job. I think he's done a terrific job. Don't he's you? What? He's a real swell. What, what <laughs> do you mean by that, Phil? You know, I, I, I think he did an awful job. What, did, what, he did, did, what did he do that was awful? The highest number of deaths in any state. But you're uh, not taking any of the external he, he, factors he, into account. He has blood on his hands for 5,000 people in assisted living homes. Oh, okay, Phil. <laughs> Phil, I'm yeah. sick and tired of you going with that old trope, okay? And I'm ready for you today. Okay. Okay, so everybody's got to be quiet for five minutes because I'm going to be running this uh, on the same... Uh, uh, audio feed that you guys are on, and I want you to hear all of this. And then, Phil, uh, after this is over... Is this my, uh, MSNBC? This is not MSNBC. This was taken off the direct feed from the governor's office today. The governor himself saying that he did no wrong, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I well, heard wait that one. Oh, you no, did? Well, no, well no. listen to it again. I want everybody to hear it. Because this thing's been going around that, oh, look at what he did to those poor people. And the, 
He forced people back to the, these, these nursing homes who had the coronavirus. Listen to this. It is completely explained in this five minutes, and shut up, Phil. Oh, wait a minute, that's not what I wanted. I always run the wrong stuff, you know? I gotta stop, I gotta stop doing this. I gotta stop putting so many videos and getting them ready. It was in the number two spot. Okay, here we go. There is a call for a federal probe into how the state handled the nursing home situation, specifically the March executive order allowing COVID positive patients back into the nursing homes. Um, in reflecting on comments, I was wondering, why was that executive order made at the time? Yeah, you should tell your, look, this is a political season. I get it. Uh, I have refrained from politics. I'm not going to get into the back, political back and forth. But uh, anyone who wants to ask why did the state uh, do that with COVID patients in nursing home, it's because the state followed President Trump's CDC guidance. So they should ask President Trump. I think, you, I think that will stop the conversation. Are you numbers? Because that's an accusation that you're facing, that you are changing the numbers to make. Well, let's, let's go back. Let's do one at a time. Okay. Your first point, why did the state do that? Because the state followed President Trump's CDC's guidance. Okay? That's that answer. Uh, no numbers were changed. Shown a, you've shown a willingness to like thwart President Trump at other times. Why on that March 25th memo did you not thwart him? Why did you follow CDC guidance? And do you regret that? I mean, no, considering not the at all. Toll. Well, you have to remember the facts. I know you're the New York Times, but facts are still facts, still right? Facts. Even at the Times, okay? <laughs> so here are the facts. Uh, the CDC guidance said a nursing home cannot discriminate against the COVID patient because at that time the issue was hospital capacity, right? Remember hospital capacity? And we were dramatically increasing hospital capacity. If a person doesn't need an urgent care bed in a hospital because they're not urgently ill and they have, it can take two weeks to test negative when you're no longer urgently ill is the best use of a hospital bed to have somebody sit there for two weeks in a hospital bed when they don't need the hospital bed because they're not urgently ill, they're just waiting to test negative on the antibody test, which can take two weeks. And you need that hospital bed for somebody who may die without it. Second fact, a nursing home cannot accept a patient who they are not qualified to handle. For a COVID patient, a nursing home must say, I can quarantine, I can isolate, I have the right staff, I have the right PPE, or else that nursing home should not take that patient. And third point, we always had alternative beds. Any nursing home that says, I can't take that COVID patient for whatever reason. I don't even care what the reason is. I don't have the staff. I don't have the time. I'm overstressed. I don't have the PPE. We always have alternative beds. We have had alternative beds all throughout this. We never got to a place where we were bumping up against uh, the capacity. So any nursing home could just say, I can't take, I can't handle a COVID person in my facility. In retrospect, do you think that was a bad decision, the, the March 25th memo? Do you think that that contributed to the death toll in this state, which is, even no. in nursing homes, is over 5,000 no. people? No, because you'd have to be saying the nursing homes were wrong in accepting COVID positive patients. That's what you would have to be saying. Why are you so resistant to an outside? That's what you would have to be saying. Why are you so resistant to an outside group? Shielded nursing homes from any most legal liability if they had a shortage. 
Do you believe a nursing home, I don't, do you believe a nursing home operator would accept a patient who they knew they couldn't care for? Why would a nursing home operator do that? Why? We always had alternative beds. If they didn't think that they could pay for, handle a COVID patient, they would say, I can't handle the COVID patient. In the past, you've used outside entities to investigate things when you were attorney general. You can be in Moreland Act commissions. Why are you so resistant to an outside probe here? I'm what not happened? resistant, Jimmy. I said I'm just not playing politics. Well, I, I don't what know who the, I don't I have know nothing who the politics to do. is. It's Democrats, it's Republicans, it's short people, tall people. I have nothing to do. If the federal government wants to start a probe, then they can start a probe. What do, you what think do I have to do with whether or not a, a – uh, a federal probe so you'd happens an or not. Probe? Why do you think the no, death toll is so much higher? I, in it is irrelevant to me. I have no role in determining a federal probe. I don't welcome, not welcome. It doesn't matter. President Trump does what he wants to do. He doesn't listen to a governor. Why do you think the death toll is so much higher in New York than it is in California? Yeah. Well, first of all, we're number thirty-four in terms of per capita <coughs> deaths in nursing homes, right? Well, in general, well, just, well, just, you asked about nursing homes. You take 50 states, and you can put all 50. Where is New York? Number 34. Okay, there you go. Uh, and Phil, of course, was making all kinds of funny little faces and jerk-off signs and so on. Yeah. But what, no, uh, sh you know, shut up, so he, shut up, shut up, shut up, Phil. Shut up. I want to hear. I want to hear what? I have a quote that came. I sent to you on May first, and it was uh, uh, published by um, uh, NBC News. And the quote was in in quotation marks. I this, saw what you sent me, and we've talked this over five times already on this his, program. Oh, no, you're burying your head in the sand. No, this I'm is not burying quote. my head in the sand, Phil. I just played you what he had to say today. And what he had to say today is a complete lie, and all he's doing is, is oh, blaming Phil, everyone so else for himself. You, you, okay, just shut up. Uh, uh, okay. I'm, just remember uh, what he said about nursing homes. I know. They don't have a right to object. That is the rule, and this is the regulation, and they have to comply with that. And that's what he said. This, about is, the, this, homes. this is the rule from Trump and the CDC, Phil. Hey, so now he's blaming them. Well, he, he no, could do whatever he wanted. Phil, oh, he was Phil, the governor. You're so full of shit, I can't believe it. Oh, uh, yeah, you just don't want to accept Rob, reality. Rob, Rob, what did you think? I don't know. I, I, I was half paying attention to that, so I, I was distracted by something here. Oh, okay. Uh, how about What's you? What's the issue? How, how about you, Brian? Yeah, I heard him say that before, and... For me, it still sounded, even before, like if the nursing home wasn't going to be able to take care of them, that they need to speak up. Yeah. yeah. You didn't hear my quote, huh, <laughs> that I got from NBC. That they quote doesn't say up. anything, Phil. I, 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 you they keep seeing right something. You have something to see. They don't have a right to object because Trump and the CDC have said that this is the protocol for doing things. The reason why those people were taken out of the hospital and put back in the nursing homes is because they were on the mend. And they didn't want to wait 14 days having them lying in a bed that could be taken by somebody else who was dying okay, and uh, be stuck, uh, stay, stay in that bed for 14 days while they got clear. Instead, for the quarantine period, they went back to the right. And that's the why 25 Which, if the, the hospital... Uh, Phil, will you home. fucking let me finish what I'm trying to say? Will you quit <laughs> being so rude to me? I'm not you you rude. won't I'm fucking shut up, Phil. You won't fucking shut up. All right, I'll shut up. Good night. Goodbye. Whew. Boy, am I glad to be rid of him. <laughs> oh, fuck. Me okay. too. You, what? You know why? You, can I just say this? You, you know why you know the issue is bullshit is because the only journalist that is that brought the thing up was that guy from the New York Post. Mm -hmm. And the New York Post is a right wing you know, it's it's one step away from the Inquirer. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he had any evidence that was solid, the New York Times, the Washington Post, 
you know, all the every all the other major media outlets would pick up on it, right? Yeah, absolutely. But absolutely. they don't because it's bullshit. All I'm saying is that what he uh, did you did you find his explanation plausible, Brian? I mean, in, in what you know about this sort of thing, that because yeah. it takes and I think I think that big clump of deaths that you know people are talking about in the nursing homes are in nursing homes when somebody caught it and they didn't catch it in time, and that thing just spreads like wildfire in there. That, that's the most vulnerable <laughs> group. Yeah, and, and but the thing was the explanation is that you don't keep somebody in the hospital for the 14 days of the quarantine period when you've got a premium on beds. Yeah, especially when they think, you know, at that time, they still think that thing's blowing up and they don't know what tomorrow looks like. They had to save all those beds for people who were, like you say, really needed the maintenance of somebody there paying and, attention. To them. And what he also said was that the, uh, if, the, if the nursing home felt they couldn't handle them, they did right. have COVID patient beds elsewhere. For instance, they had the Jacob Javits Center. They had the uh, um, uh, the the cruise ship. You know, the cruise ship, the hospital ship, <laughs> nursing, uh, the nursing boat. Uh, uh, they had that. You know, they had places to put them if the operators felt they couldn't take care of these people. But these people were already, these people that came back were already on the mend. It's just they hadn't gone the full 14 days. Yes, Jeff. Okay, I have uh, experience of, of one person who's in one of these beds. And in, in, in it's in Connecticut. It's not New York, but it's, it's damn close. And what she didn't, we asked her if she wanted to come to one of those houses that we know because somebody is down in Florida right now and their house is open mm -hmm. and maybe you can go in that, that room. No, I don't want to do that. I want to stay there because this is where I live now. And, and also, um, they get certain people who are benefited to them. Yeah. People who help them, people who give them uh, lunch and, and breakfast. And and then also, until, I don't know, two weeks ago or yesterday or something, they had to keep in each uh, special room and not go into anybody else's room. So these places were very well organized, too. And and the best thing, she said yesterday, we're, we're allowed to walk around. Uh, the... Yeah. Uh... The uh, thing that I that you know that that we were just arguing with Phil about, or rather that he was filibustering on, it was also this guy Dave uh, Polison wrote me. He said Governor Cuomo signed an order to house people with coronavirus at nursing homes. That's completely false. That's not what he did at all. He simply said that once they were taken care of in the hospitals, they had to go back to the nursing homes, and if the nursing homes couldn't take them. They had a place to put to house them. We're all just getting caught up in politics here. I know, but this is this is has really there's no bearing on anything. Well, well, it's it's the right pushing back on the left because the because the right blew this so bad. The president, mm -hmm. things are so bad, and so everybody on the right mm -hmm. is deflecting to the left, where mm -hmm. you got a guy like Cuomo who is you know leading. Okay, so they have to poke holes in him leading because God forbid he gets really popular and maybe there is something that happens at the convention this summer and you know and they do draft him right yeah they want to pull coals at this guy they want to make him look bad well that's what this is all about and we're just giving it more airtime yeah. and that's what the pandemic playbook it was so important because when that starts going through you're going to have those questions and then the governors know exactly what to do if they have patients that are trying to recover and the nursing homes cannot take them. They have all the plans for that. But when it's so bumbled up from, from the very beginning, the governors don't know what to do. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah John Larkin had his hand up. Yeah. And, and don't forget, Fox News, they just need fucking just meat to fucking feed. You know, I mean, it's all bullshit. But they just, you know, Tucker Carlson and, you know, the other asshole, Sean Hannity, they just need bullshit to... Uh, you know, stir it up. Well, what's interesting, what's interesting is, and, and you're right, uh, but mm -hmm. what's interesting here in this case is, is that 
Cuomo has become the most articulate spokesperson for how you handle this pandemic. Mm -hmm. He's acting like the president should be acting. He is, is, he is acting as our president in a way. Uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, but uh, you, you notice that there isn't one Republican who believes that. That believes what? That believes. I shouldn't say a Republican because there are a lot of anti-Trump Republicans out there. Yeah. Trumpers. Yeah. Aren't going to believe for one minute. I don't care what he. You could have played twenty minutes of the of uh, of that's of uh, Cuomo. But you know, I, like bit. this note that I got here from this person. It goes, but the you know the results have been tragic and blah 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 blah. This has been a, a, almost an urban myth about what tr what uh, Cuomo did or didn't do. Uh, Cuomo's the first one to say in any of these press conferences. Hey, I make mistakes, and I've made a lot of mistakes in this thing, you know, but I try to correct them and move onward. Uh, in this particular case, this, this thing has been going around to try and discredit Cuomo because they consider him the most, most articulate, right. and they want to cool. blunt it, and they blunt it with a complete fabrication. Today he gave what I consider a plausible explanation— he was going by the president and the CDC's guidelines of what you did in that kind of situation, and so he ordered it up. Okay? You know, he's taking the orders from the top. He's deflecting. <laughs> like, like Rob says, though, like Rob says, though, that, you know, people who are Trumpers, mm -hmm. I put on the McConnell, Mitch McConnell's saying back that, oh, there was a pandemic playbook that we got from Obama. Mm -hmm. I put that on there, and Trumper still argued, says, right. no, this is wrong. This, somebody mocked this up. This was Photoshop. Right. I'm like, right. you guys, this is a fact. This is a fact. They still don't take it. Right. They, they haven't given a, a good God diddly crap about Cuomo until he has become overwhelmingly popular. His approval rating in the country right now, as a result of this situation, is 75 percent okay mm -hmm. pretty uh, th there are some other governors who are pretty high too i think gavin newsom's up around 73 percent i don't know if uh, i believe polls anymore after the uh, 2016 election <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not kidding. I, I don't know if i believe it because i don't know that yeah. people tell the truth yeah but uh, and 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 Trump's uh, uh, poll numbers on this are somewhere about uh, that they trust him with his decisions and so on is somewhere down around uh, by, I think forty two percent something like that. Yeah, I think that's did, did you hear him claiming that uh, that the reason the uh, governors have got such high ratings is because of him? <laughs> of course, <What> really, <laughs> really, yeah. Good guy. Okay, all right. You know, I mean, uh, he, 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 well, Trump is really, you know, tr the trouble is that, uh, excuse me, I have to rub my eye because it's, uh, it's itching like crazy. Uh, 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 Trump uh, uh, is, is, I think, getting a little galled by Cuomo. Cuomo isn't trying to bait Trump because he feels he needs Trump to do stuff for the city. I mean, for the for the state rather, and that he doesn't want to have to go to him and have hostility. But it gets harder every day when Trump says things about him, about other people in the party, when he lies about the situation, when he goes and says, "I'm taking the the chloroquine or whatever that name of that stuff is," you know. Um, Do you really believe that? The, I mean, I firmly believe that this our system is a mess and i don't even know what the hell you can do about it because we live in an age now where it's not important to do the right thing it's important to be right and that that's both sides it's important for me to be right in how in what i believe more important than for me to weigh the facts and say no i'm wrong i can't be wrong so the i what i believe has to be right that's just the way we believe today. You're not going to convince anybody of yeah. anything. You're not going to change anybody's mind. And and how do you run a government? Maybe we need to change things to the point where if you have a Democratic president, then the Senate and the Congress have to be Republican. So at least you have balance. Because when you don't have balance, you can see what – they let him run amok. They won't impeach him. If he, if he were a Democrat, they would have had him out already, right? 
Well, my, my point is, is that none of this, is, and, and Cuomo does say he doesn't want to get political about this. You no choice. But, this is the world we live in. But, well, he, well, in a way he had to uh, because he had to say, hey, you know, I was only doing what Trump indicated we should be doing. You know, yes, uh, Charlie. Well, I, I kind of disagree with Rob in that I don't think the Democrats are near as bad as the Republicans. I, 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 the Republicans actually come out and say we make our own reality. They don't care what the facts are. They just blatantly lie. But we do it in a different way. Democrats aren't as blatant. They don't, they aren't going to tell you that the sky is green instead of blue. The Republicans will. I think I know I, I I would disagree with you, Charlie. That I do think the Democrats are somewhat complicit in this, uh, in this in this back and forth between left and right, left and right, left and right, and that they feel they have to follow a certain uh, a, a, a certain um, what do we call it? a certain oh god what's the word I'm looking for I'm out of it tonight again protocol ideology a certain I ideology yeah and that if they if they veer from that they're not being loyal to their own kind right and and I think that is there's no place for this and I think Cuomo makes a very good case for the fact that there's no place for this no place for Mitch McConnell to say we're not going to bail out the blue states right Absolutely. Okay. When, when, yes. when, Only the Republicans say that. No Democrat has ever said we're not going to bail out the red states. I would yeah, agree. I would wait. Uh, got hit under Obama's uh, uh, administration with, with, with the hurricanes. Yeah. They rushed money here. Yeah. Even though Texas had been refusing to vote for money for New York when they got hit. By the way, let me also mention, hello, Bree. How are you? Hello. You just took up. Uh, you just uh, took up uh, the space that would have been taken up by Phil. Okay. So. Uh, uh, so so Alex, so Trump is right, Alex, and you're wrong. And whatever you say is absolutely wrong. Whatever I say is absolutely right. No discussion. Stop okay. It. Good. And 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 you have to keep talking too while I'm trying to talk. That's right. I'll <laughs> talk to you. You're going to get a word in yeah, twice. Right. Okay. Uh, the thing that was funny about Phil is I said I'm going to play you, I'm going to play this thing I'm going to play this thing that um, Cuomo said today about the nursing home thing and he said I already heard it. Well, he couldn't have heard it, and I'll tell you why, because I he all the networks and even the local stations had bailed out of the press conference by the time he made this statement. I had to go to YouTube to go f l listen to the rest of the press conference and then to get this off of the tail end of what was not covered on any network. So, Phil, you couldn't have heard it. You know? No, but what he's saying is that he already knows the gist of what those type of people say. Yeah. You know, it's, it's similar. <laughs> And I wrote this on the chat. I, I used I used to watch Sean Hannity and listen to Rush Limbaugh regularly. Yeah. And I it was entertaining. Yeah. And I've always been in the middle. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm an independent. So but what they do is they'll take a, a little thing that kind of makes sense. And then they really have to blow it up because they got to get an hour out of it. They got to get the call. Yeah. In. And but after a while, I know what I can tell you exactly what they're going to say. I know what they're going to say. It's predictable. <clears throat> You know, and so I look for people where it's it's not so predictable. But the, unfortunately, in the commercial world of, you know, broadcasting and whatnot, you kind of have to have that. So, no, you, you don't know, have the Fairness Act. And, right? and I, I feel sometimes I feel bad for Sean Hannity. Like I see him. He gets all his makeup on. He gets a suit on. He has this. He can never, ever break sort of break faith and break ranks. He can't say, well, I actually don't know if this is, but I got to, you know, it, Tucker Carlson does it a little bit, hmm. but Sean Hannity cannot. He is playing a role and he must maintain that. He's straight. He's I always when I see him in a suit, I see him in a straight jacket. He cannot, you know, ever break that that well, role. Well, and I, I'll, and I tell think you, I'll tell you the, the idea. Uh, do you want to say something, John? Yeah. Um, if, if I, I don't know. If, tell me if I'm wrong, but. When I watch Fox News, you know, for a while, and then I'll watch MSNBC for a while, it appears that they're, that they're talking to two different levels of IQ. You know what I mean? It's like the Fox News 
people are talking to like morons or something. I mean, I'm not just talking about their ideology, just the way they, you know, they just seem like this is so it's such just a stupid analysis. Whereas you look, if you watch like Chris Hayes or Rachel Maddow, you know where they're coming from. They're left, but it's at least it's a pretty intelligent analysis, you know? Don't you think? Well, I, you know, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Rachel Maddow either, you know, except on Batwoman. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not a big who, fan. Who was the guy who I, played I, BJ Honeycutt on MASH? Do you remember? Wayne Rogers. Wayne Rogers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Or, okay. Who was the one? Mike Farley? Mike Fa uh, Mike, Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. He was, do, he was the one that replaced uh, Wayne Rogers. I think. Yes. Yeah, so Sean Sean Hannity used to have him on his show, and and that was an interesting, you know, conversation. Yeah, that guy, he was a lefty. They though, stopped right? doing that. Yeah. Well, you know, um, the the point is that we just we just have this this whole uh, it, we are in a situation in which politics be damned. You know. People should put aside their differences and say we have a, a we have a population in peril, and we need to do something about this. And uh, I don't know why we insist on on making a right, left or right issue out of it. I don't make a left or right issue out of it. You know what I make it an issue of? Uh, New York versus the rest of the country, because we're fighting for our lives here. You know, and places like uh, Wisconsin don't feel the brunt of it like we have so far. And, you know, somebody who, uh, who er er earlier said, uh, 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 and it might have been Phil saying, oh, you, you, you have to blame uh, uh, Cuomo for the deaths of all these people. No, we're not blaming him for the deaths of it. We're, bl we're, we're lauding him for saving maybe 100,000 lives by taking action. Yes, Charlie. Um, oh, God. No, I lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's about the... Uh, well, when Trump says we don't need any... Uh, we test more people, we have more cases, so all we have to do is stop testing and we won't have so many cases. How could you it's get sick. away with that in any it's kind sick. of rational society? Well, he did, did he really say that? Yes, well, he, he was implying that. that. He even said it twice. He came back and doubled back on it. What's that he yeah. said again? <laughs> he said that we the reason we have so many cases is because oh. we're testing yes, so much. Yes, because we've so tested we so much. Test so we won't have oh, so it. many cases. Yeah, yeah he, well, said, he did say that. He said it's a badge of honor. Yeah, <laughs> I know you find that hard to you hard find that hard to believe, Rob. But, but he said that. So, so would he said, I. I shouldn't get a chest X-ray because I don't want to know if I have lung cancer or not. And if I don't get the X-ray, I'm no way I'm going to have lung cancer. Uh, no way I'm going to have lung cancer, right? <laughs> oh, here's, right here's where here's yeah. where we get bogged down in you know specific items, and and that's a, yeah. that's from the Trump playbook. Right. But that's a, that's not specific. He does that on many items. That's his general train train of his train of thought. <laughs> train of thought. Right. When you that's get that's the way yeah. he thinks. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, when you get involved in yeah, that, he yeah. has won because you've come into the mud with the pig. Yeah. You know, the, that's the not thing mud. Is, that's 100,000 people dead. Yeah. That's not and For mud. him, that's mud. For him, that's the mud. Yeah. People and are fucking dying. You can't let a if, moron run the country well, and people are dying. That's, that's the key. That's no, you can key. let a, mor just, a, a moron. All you have to do is just say people are dying and people continue to die. You can period. let a moron There's run no the country. There's no national plan. Yeah, you, can, you, can, you can let a moron run the country when people are dying if the moron at least realizes he's a moron and let smarter people prevail. Hello, Vernon. You've been listening to this? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, your takeaway? I'm I'm getting very discouraged, and here's why. Yeah. The <clears throat> the reason that Donald Trump was impeached in the first place was because he used political influence uh, with Ukraine, saying, "I'm going to give you this funding that Congress approved if you do me a favor." Well, now he's doing the same thing with the state of Michigan, yep. because. The state of Michigan has mailed out paper ballots to people because of COVID. 
Right. And he's saying, you got to stop doing that or I'm not going to send you federal money because of the flooding that's taking place right now. Oh. Yeah, he did say that today. Yes. Uh, and and I yeah. don't, and I, I, for the life of me, cannot figure out what he's got against mail ballots. I mean, it's I just... A, it, it's, 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 it's suppressing the vote, Alex. Right. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if yeah. more people Bring vote, he's not going to win. Do that. No, but here's it's the thing. No, really what I don't understand is what... Of them. No, but the more what, people vote, the worse the, Dem the Republicans will do. But I'm trying to figure out what is the rationale he's giving for the, f the fact that he doesn't want mail-in ballots, I mean, outside in of the obvious mind, reason. In his mind, there's more potential fraud. But he should like well, that. That's that's, it can't go his way. Really? Because that's fraud has worked for him in the past. But with the voting machines, he's counting on that. He's got the voting machines figured out. Huh. No, that's but he can always say that it was it was fixed, that our dead people were turning in mail-in votes, all that you stuff. Know. Well, well, voting, no, here's, well, here's you know that's going to happen. Here, here, here's oh. the thing. Here's the thing. In the state of Kentucky, I can vouch for this because we're ha we had our primary moved from May to June. Mm -hmm. And you can request now a mail-in ballot for the primary when you request it, you go on a specific website and you have to fill out certain information, which the Board of Elections clerk will verify you are who you are, and then they will email you an application for a mail-in ballot. They fill out all of the personal information after they verified it. Then all you have to do is sign it and mail it in, and they will send you the mail-in ballot to the address that you put on that form. Right. We just sent <clears throat> ours in. So how can there be fraud on something like that? By the way, Peter Arno on our chat room mm -hmm. said, uh, all of a sudden, panelists who usually say little or nothing are expressing themselves. Best reason to keep Phil off the show. Uh, uh, but <laughs> it's true. Go. But it's true. All of a sudden, the rest of you felt you could jump mm -hmm. in, say something, feel free to say it you know, about somebody monopolizing the conversation. And it's not that I don't appreciate Phil, but, you know, I've asked him in the past to back off a little bit. Just, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not asking him to, you know, moderate what he says or what his opinions are, but just to back off, you know, to give other people a chance to breathe. And I, I do think Charlie is far more v verbose right now than he is when Phil's on, you know. So, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. Even even Jeff is saying absolutely. See, I mean, yeah. Jeff. <laughs> and I like he gets Phil. a chance to. I like yeah. Phil as a I mean, person. Yeah, I do too. But, but you know, the the show. well, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm trying to do a, a a show that everybody kind of like talks. You know, it was funny the other day. Uh, I did this thing in the afternoon uh, using uh, Zoom. And uh, with, to begin with, we had people we don't usually have because it is a different time of the day, and Charlie was on one of them, uh, and Kevin was on this one the other day, uh, but a lot of people we didn't have before, and there was no Phil, basically. There was Brian was there, too. Brian was there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brian's got a lot of free time on his hands. Uh, <laughs> Brian was there. Good morning. And, and uh, he, um, they, um, it, was a, it was a great conversation, wasn't it, Brian? Yeah, yeah, very good. Very yeah. civil, very, and, and everybody was positive, you know, and it wasn't a matter that they all agreed. That's not the point. I don't care what you believe. If you disagree with me, fine. It makes for a better show, okay? Uh, but uh, I just don't like, like it when somebody becomes disruptive and, and tries to monopolize the conversation. Uh, and doesn't have the respect for me and the other people on the panel. And if you can't be that way, then don't call the program. But if you can, if you can be that way, we'd love to have you. I don't care what your opinion is. I don't care if you're a right winger. Just be respectful that left wingers have their opinion too. You know, that's really what it's all about. But uh, you know, uh, and the reason I played that today is because I was have been waiting for. Cuomo to finally answer the question of what went on with the nursing homes and his his handling of it. And we got the answer, and that's what I was playing. Uh, but, you know, 
wasn't willing to, they weren't, you know, he wasn't willing to take the, uh, the answer for, you know, that uh, the, he sat there while the thing was going on doing this, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, and and it, it, it just being it, it, trying to uh, uh, kind of being disrespectful of the fact that we were playing a, a clip of sorts. Well, I, know. I'm not a big fan of of uh, Cuomo as well, uh, Alex. And yeah. but I but I would never engage in that kind of activity. Yeah, uh, I would I would say good for you know Cuomo to you know to try to uh, address issues, but. He had one the other day. It said, "The good news is he had it on a, on his background, and it said something like we're, 'We're through the worst of this, and we're getting through it,' or something like that." And I disagreed with what, what he was calling good news. I, I, I thought it was, it was not realistic. There were, that there was still a possibility of. This is the thing around here too. Around me, people are acting like nothing is has changed. We're back to normal. And yeah. I just, I think that that's that's wrong, and we got to be we got to be careful, and you know. Yeah, yeah, you have to you have to temper that though, because you you can't be doom and gloom because people maybe in your country it's different, but here, you can't you can't suppress Americans like that. They're going to eventually revolt, and then there's a bigger problem. So you you try to celebrate the wins when you can, and and you know okay. you just can't you just can't go until because this could go on until mid next year, and you okay. can't tell everybody you're going to stay home till next year. And and I hear you, Robin. That's a valid point. The, the 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 slide he put up was the good news is we are finally ahead of this virus, and we are in control of our destiny. Totally disagree <laughs> with that. Uh, and you but, know, but and, <laughs> Let's watch the numbers. If they're bringing it down, they're ahead of the curve. When it's going up, they're not ahead of the curve. <laughs> yeah. Is that Phil? Yeah. But he's saying finally ahead of this virus. That <laughs> that implies we got this, and it's not going to more. Who's Rocky? Yeah, uh, Ray, that's a little distracting. Ray. It's a little distracting. <laughs> Who is that? Yeah, that's that's Ray. 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 But it's a little distracting while we're trying I'm to talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Ray Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Charlie. But the thing that, that Bree's not taking into account is that New York was having close to a thousand people die every day, and now they're down to a hundred. They're the yeah. only place where the numbers are going down. Yeah. And are, and do you guarantee me, Charlie, that it will never go back up above a thousand? Guarantee me that, and I'll agree with you. I well, would probably and, guarantee and you can. I, I would probably guarantee you that, uh, and for this reason, Bree, that that uh, Cuomo's take on this is that we have to learn from all of this, and we have to learn about future yep. methodologies that we put in place, yep. and that we have to watch every metric, scientific metric that comes our way, and if science. it, it it's science, yes. and if it yes. starts going up a little bit, you know, you just it, it's like a, it's like a valve. You turn the valve down. In other yeah. words, you've got to keep your eye on it, and we can't make the same mistakes we made before. One of the major mistakes that we made, uh, above and beyond anything else, was that we weren't looking to people coming from Europe. We yeah. thought, oh, right. we got to stop everything coming from China. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, it was coming. What came here was from Europe, and the strain that came to New York was a much deadlier strain. By the time it got here, it had had time to to grow up and to get stronger. And so the people that were bringing it over here were bringing a strain that was far more dangerous. That's why California, in spite of the fact that they started earlier in, in, stop, in, in having everybody stay in place, but more than that, and, and this was the important part, was that was a different strain. And we got the worst of it here. And we turned off the valve completely and things slid back, and yeah, things might go back up again. But if they do, he's gonna start shutting things yeah. down. You know, you shut it down again. Yeah, and I, we, I think the biggest problem is we don't have leadership that believes in science. That's just almost like what, what Charlie started saying. Yeah. It is until we have a administration, and not just one person, but man, with, with the climate change and with all this thing we're talking about. Our president keeps talking about this that people are starting to believe some of the science, but. 
I don't think that's true. I, I think it's going to go back to how it was before. If our president believes that the way to control this is to not test, you know, right. he's not even in science. And, or not reveal how many people are dying like they're doing in Florida and Georgia. Oh, like, we just like shut down. Don't tell anybody what yeah. happened. Yeah, exactly. That's right. You're right. It's so. going to continue. It's going to continue. There's no plan nationally. So everybody right. for themselves. Some some places are going to flare, some won't. Some will travel, exactly. some won't. It's going to Don't continue. come to Texas. It's going to by the continue. Way, by the way, the couple of states they always point to, uh, and one of them is Florida, is saying, well, they, they don't. They haven't seen a rise. Well, I, in the last couple of days, they've seen a spike. Mm -hmm. And the, that spike yeah. doesn't take place till 14 days later. Yes, uh, yeah, yes, Severin. Well, on the good news side, uh, I think you know I've I volunteer or had been volunteering for Habitat for Humanity, mm -hmm. and the first week of March they shut down all construction activities, but uh, they continued doing some things that had been done by volunteers using construction contractors, subcontractors, and that has been that was continued using specific guidelines that the CDC was recommending no more than so many people on the job site at a time uh, using personal protective equipment, having hand sanitizer and that. Well, today, this week is the second week in a row that my group, the electricians, have worked on a house. But it was with specifics that uh, we were supposed to follow. We only had six people working at a time, mm -hmm. maximum of eight. Yeah. And uh, there was a bin provided by Habitat Management with hand sanitizer, with disinfectant spray, with disinfectant wipes, with face covers, and with gloves. And if you're gonna be working close to each other, there's also a face shield that you strap around your face. If you're gonna be less than four feet away working with someone, yeah. you're required to wear the face shield. And you keep that face shield in this bin, and you keep the, the a disinfectant and all that in this bin. So next Tuesday, when we go to a different house, I will carry that bin with me as the leader for everybody to have the PPE available. Cool, cool. Did you anybody know see the report uh, on NBC tonight about Macy's reopening? Yes. And what they're doing to make the stores ready? Yeah, they're changing they its name to Bloomingdale's. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I heard it was when David you, Marcus. When you think about what they have to do, I mean, for example, you go into a dressing room and try on a bunch of clothes, mm -hmm. those clothes are taken out and they will not be put back on the floor for a while. Everything is being rotated. They, they went through a whole bunch, a litany of things that they're doing. Makeup counters, no more makeup on your faces, anything they have, like they that. Paper, gonna, they paper, they yeah, do they're it They're doing it on paper. It's just, I mean, the world is changing. You know, and until we until we get a a, um, a vaccine, once we get a vaccine, maybe we can go back to life kind of the way it was. But until mm -hmm. then, no way. And even after that, I don't think things are necessarily going to change. I think people are going to change their habits because they saw what this got us into. Okay, and uh, I I don't I, I think it's going to be many years before we ever get back to any kind of normalcy, uh, if that. You know, I, I, you know, would you go to a movie theater anytime soon, even if there was a vaccine? Eh, no, I don't think so. I don't hey. think so. Yes, John, uh, I, quickly. I, I'm an usher in a theater, so you know, what am I going to do? <laughs> well, um, bring. Uh, I don't know. I'll buy your flashlight from you. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, boy, this has been good. Oh, wow. You know something? Uh, since Phil left, thank you, Phil, for leaving because. We got the highest numbers we've ever had here on the people watching. All of a sudden, they zoomed right up. Uh, I, not, you know, not that I don't like Phil, you know. Uh, yes, uh, everybody, well, uh, for, let me acknowledge you, uh, Rob, who, by the way, tell them where they can listen to your little radio station. Where can they listen to it? Rob? They can't right now. I have to send links out to people. I, I'm waiting on a logo. I'm waiting on a bunch of things. But thank you for the uh, email today. Okay. The station went off the air because the, the PC here lost the network connection. Don't know why. The rest of the uh, house did. Those kind of things happen. Then I, I want to promote villageradio.net. 
Okay, VillageRadio.net. That's Bree. Uh, thank you, Charlie. Uh, thank you. Oh, there, there is Brian with his wow. kid. Oh boy, is that the good kid? That's a good one, right? Yes. <laughs> <good>. Jeff, <laughs> thank you, thank you, John Larkin. We love having you here now as a regular. Same thing with you, Vernon Nunn. We like all of you. We love all of you. And thanks to Phil as well for the contribution he made this evening. Meanwhile, why don't you all give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye back at you. Bye-bye. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our um, citizen panel for tonight. Up next, uh, it's uh, Jack Bishop, and he's going to be here with the intersection, okay? Uh, and he would love to get some calls from you and have you talk about uh, uh, what you want to talk about and uh, you know, whatever. Anyway, listen, we, we got to go. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, same time, uh, ten, what, 1030 Eastern Daylight Time? Yeah, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.